are a lot of questions about serological testing, which tests for antibodies. Antibody testing tells us how many people were previously infected with a pathogen. Beth gave us a great overview on this in an earlier video and what it might mean for individuals as we look ahead. Antibodies can be detected during infection or afterwards, even if the infection was asymptomatic and the patient never sought testing or treatment while they were infected. An advantage of these tests is that they can tell us what's happening at the population level. For example, what proportion of the population has likely been infected and what proportion is still susceptible. Using large numbers of individuals helps overcome the errors of over-interpreting any single test result, and that information can help us make public health decisions. First, serological testing can help us understand the case fatality rate. In a previous video, I explained that the case fatality rate is the number of infections that result in death. I said we couldn't accurately calculate that at the moment because we don't know how many infections there have been. We're mostly counting severe and symptomatic cases so far, which tends to overestimate the case fatality rates. Serological testing would help us understand the total number of previous cases better than we do now, so we can more accurately calculate the proportion that has resulted in fatalities. That same information can help us estimate transmission rates across populations which ties into my next point. The second benefit of serological testing is that it can help us measure exactly how effective behavioral interventions have been. By measuring the differences in serological findings across populations, we can assess behavioral interventions that were effective and successful and try to understand why others might have been less effective. We can use that information to update and adapt the next phase of behavioral interventions. While there is a lot of discussion about assessing individual immunity to allow recovered members of society to take on critical tasks, we're not quite there yet with testing accuracy. The sensitivity of a test describes its ability to correctly identify someone who has had the disease, and the specificity refers to a test's ability to correctly identify someone who has not had the disease. A false negative from a test with low sensitivity would be misleading. But a false positive from a test with low specificity could cost lives. This could happen due to cross-reactivity with other viruses, which is particularly important because we know other coronaviruses frequently circulate through our populations. Ideally, we would like the sensitivity and specificity of these serological tests to be near 99%, which means that every test should return only about one false positive and one false negative for every 100 true positive and true negative tests. If we know that a test has a specificity that's lower than that, we can estimate a range of immunity for a population across hundreds or thousands of samples. That can tell us how many cases to prepare for in the coming months and when to ease restrictions. However, we can't use a test with low specificity to clear a single individual for high-risk activities without endangering a lot of lives. The currently available tests need some improvement in both sensitivity and specificity before we can use them confidently to assess individual infections. So while serological tests may not yet be accurate enough for us to make decisions about individuals, they can give us a lot of important information about populations and making population-level health policy decisions.